My name is Son of the Hunter. I tend our sheep and goats. This time of the year, the grazing is good up here on Blue Mountain. My grandfather says if I run a race every morning, the sun will see me and know that I am running because I want a horse. For the sun is our true father. And before long, I'll get a horse. This is my grandfather, Graysinger. He is not my real grandfather, but since he has no family of his own, my mother lets him live with us. He is very wise and used to be a medicine man. He can make sand paintings and knows the lucky songs. I told him about the owl up on Blue Mountain that hooted three times in the daylight. He said it was a warning that I must not take the sheep up there again. But there is good pasture there, I told him, and none where we live. Then we must move to another place, he said. Never ignore the warning of the owl. And he sent me to herd the sheep home. My mother, Good Weaver, works from dawn to darkness, for we are very poor since my father went away. He is working for the white people on the railroad, far away to the south. He has been gone a long time now. We do not go hungry very often. Gray Singer told my mother that we were going to have to move to another place. He said that my sisters could herd the sheep while he and I looked for a place to spend the winter. There should be lots of pinion nuts above the Great Rock Canyon. If my mother would allow it, he would take me there, and we would look for a new home on the way. I was very excited, for I had never seen the Great Rock Canyon. We traveled a long way, sometimes hardly sleeping but we did not find good pasture land anywhere on the journey. Finally, we crossed great hills of sand that moved, and my grandfather said we were very near now. Then we stopped at a pile of stones that Gray Singer said had been there for over a hundred years. He told me to throw a stone on the pile with the juniper twig and make a wish, for whoever does this will have his wish come true. I wished that we would find many pinion nuts and that I wouldn't have to wait too long for my horse. I could hardly believe what I saw. It took my breath away. I was afraid of standing there, for the wind might blow suddenly. And it was a long way down. Gray Singer pointed out the ruins of the ancient ones who lived there so long ago that no one remembers. But 
the ghosts of the dead still haunt these places. This canyon of Tsegi has always been the stronghold of the Navajos. Many years ago, the white soldiers were at war with us, and our people gathered here for protection. He showed me the trail down into the canyon, the same trail that our people used when they came here to escape. If our enemies, the Utes, had not betrayed us, the soldiers would never have found the hiding place. The people climbed up into caves and ledges so high the soldiers could not reach them. But they could not come down for water, and the soldiers killed their sheep, so that finally the people were starved into surrender and taken far away into captivity. Only a few escaped. Much farther up the rim, we went out to the point that overlooks Spider Rock. That's where the spider lady lives. When children are bad, she grabs them by the hair and takes them up to the top to eat them. Gray Singer wanted to show me the side canyon where he was born. His mother was one of the few who escaped from the white soldiers. She and a few others lived for three years far up in a secret cave. They were afraid to come down, except to get water and bark and roots to eat. Once, some soldiers came back into the canyon, and that night three of our braves crept down and stole their food and water. So even with their guns, the white men were soon helpless and the people killed them with rocks. That's the kind of warriors the Navajos were. As we picked the pinion nuts, I kept thinking of how the white soldiers had starved our people into surrender. And I told my grandfather that I hated all white men. But he told me that I mustn't have evil thoughts, for a thought, spoken or not, is real. It is a black path that leads only into darkness, he said. We should turn our thoughts into the path of light. We should think of the beauty that is all around us. The blue skies, the sacred mountains, the sun and the moon, the green grass that comes with the springtime. As it says in the blessing chant, the earth is beautiful. Below the east, the dawn. Below the west, the afterglow of sundown. The earth is beautiful. Sometimes I didn't understand what Grasinger was telling me, but I always felt happy after I listened to him. night I had a bad dream. I dreamed that the people were again hiding in the great rock canyon. The wind seemed like a voice and I could not go back to sleep. I wanted to awaken my grandfather but he was sleeping like a dead person. the wind grew stronger. I could not forget the people starving in their caves. I could not forget my hatred for the white men. I knew my thoughts were evil and might bring me bad luck. I tried to think of good things, to put my thoughts on the path of light. But it was dark everywhere. I have always been afraid of the night. But then the chindis come out, the ugly evil spirits. I felt as if eyes were watching me. The voice of the wind kept getting louder and louder. It was telling me to beware of something that was going to happen. The evil thought kept growing in me like poison swelling from a snake bite. In my fear, I had almost done a very bad thing. 
For we do not kill our brothers, the animals and birds and snakes. My grandfather said that he would sing the chant of the beauty path so the rattlesnake would not be offended. We stopped at a trading post not far from the mouth of the Great Canyon, for Gray Singer knew the trader there. I wanted to go inside the store with him, but I had to watch the horse. Then I heard a group of people talking. A man was saying that the white chief in Washington was going to make all Indian children between 6 and 12 years old go to school. That meant me, for I am seven. Then another spoke and said no child of his would ever go to one of those schools, for the son of long mustache had been taken there, and they had cut off his hair and jabbed needles in his arm and made him talk like a white man. That worried me. I didn't want to be jabbed in the arm with needles and have my hair cut off and talk like a white man. Then my grandfather came out with a traitor. They call him, he's losing his pants. He was the first white man I had ever seen up close. He could speak our tongue and he seemed friendly, but I didn't like him to get too near me. He told us to wait a moment, and I wondered what he was going to do. I am afraid of white people. They are strange. we camped at a place called Rock Standing Up, and my grandfather talked to the stars. He was trying to learn where we would find a new home with water and pasture for the sheep. I wondered how he could talk to the stars. I looked out too, but I didn't know how to talk to them. I decided right then that no matter what, they would never make me go to that white man's school. We got back to the Hokan late the next night. The stars had told Graysinger that we would find a new place to live somewhere to the southwest. So early the next morning, we took the sheep out of the corral, for if they could not graze up on Blue Mountain, they would not live through the winter. My mother did not want to leave the home where we had lived with my father, but there was nothing to stay for. We traveled many days, stopping to rest only when it was too dark to see the trail. Gray Singer led us always southwest toward one of the sacred mountains, but there was no water or grass, only rock and sand and dried up gullies. The sheep grew poor and cried for water, and one night some of the lambs wandered off and were eaten by coyotes.
one afternoon, Gracinger led us up into a little canyon and called for us to look ahead. It was almost too good to be true. There was a big water hole and peach trees like the Hopis have. No sign of anyone living there. My mother was happy that we had found such a good place. And she said if my father knew about it, that he would come back to us. She wanted to send me to tell him. But Gracinger said the white man's town was no place for a boy. After he had helped us build a corral for the sheep and a brush hole gun, he would go to see my father himself. This pleased my mother very much, and me also. We were going to be a family again. Third morning, the grandfather set out for the white man's town to get my father. I decided to look around and see who our neighbors might be. It was strange. There was not a sign of any living person. Ever since we have come to this place, we have seen no one. curious about a big rock that was standing up. How did it get like this? Then I knew what it was. I had heard my father tell about them. It was a coyote trap. The Navajos do not kill them, but we are happy if Mr. Coyote kills himself because he eats our lambs. Strange pictures painted on the walls by the old ones who had lived here long ago, before our people came. I did not know what they meant, but they told some story. I did not tell my mother about the rocks falling down, for I did not want to frighten her. But she told my sister she had a bad dream the night before. In the dream, Gracinger fell from his horse, and then rocks rolled down upon him. That was bad. If we could not warn Gracinger within three days, this might really happen to him. Soon after that, things began to go wrong. It turned cold and we did not have enough to eat. We always went to sleep hungry. Then the water hole dried up, and the sheep cried again. Some of them ate bitter weeds, and they died. No one came near us during all this time. I wondered what had happened to Grace Singer. Maybe the bad dream had come true. Or maybe he was too old to have made such a long trip. I wondered what my father was doing, and if he ever thought of us. 
Then, after a long time, our grandfather, Gray Singer, came back with some food for us. But my father was not with him. brought bad news. My father, the hunter, wasn't coming back. He had taken another wife, one that was half white. Grace Singer said that she was no good and that my father was making a fool of himself. He got drunk on the white man's whiskey and was arrested by the policeman and locked up in jail. He didn't even care what had happened to his family. I didn't want to believe it, but I hated the white people even more after that. My mother took it bravely. We will not say his name again, she said. We must go to work so we can live through the winter. We must take good care of the sheep so they will multiply. We must forget about him. That has all passed. grandfather said he was very tired from the long journey and felt sick. But as soon as he was better, we must move again. For he had learned that many years ago, a war party of youths had ambushed the Navajo families who were living here, and the spirits of the dead still haunted this place. So that was why we had such bad luck. It made me afraid even in the daytime. Grandfather never got well enough to make the move. He dressed in his best clothes and asked us to bring him to this lonely place, away from the Hogan, with food and water enough to last four days. It is the Navajo way. If he died inside the Hogan, we could not stay there, even for a night. It is hard. But if my little sister had been dying, we would have to leave her out here alone. told us goodbye and asked that we did not kill his horse, for the custom is to send the horse with the one whose lips are sealed, so he will not have to walk on his long journey. He wanted me to have his horse, he said, for I was young and had my life in front of me. He did not mind walking, for he would be young himself soon, for nothing dies, he told us. The body has only been lent us by the time we are on earth. Then it goes back into the earth. The spirit goes to the land of peace and summer from which it came. He told us always to follow the path of light and never let evil thoughts grow in us. And then he said we must leave him. the custom, but we would miss him. He was like our real grandfather. It did not take four days. On the dawn of the second day, he was lying there, the food untouched. not been for the buzzard in the sky, I would have thought he was sleeping.
My mother sent me to the nearest trading post to ask a white man to bury our grandfather. We dared not touch the body, for we are afraid of the dead. We did not want the coyotes to eat Grace Singer. I rode as fast as I could, but all the time I kept remembering that I had put a stone on the wishing pile so I would get a horse. I did not want to get one this way. was a policeman, one of our own people. He wanted to know my name and where I lived, and then he asked me how old I was. I lied to him, but he knew our ways and asked me four times, so that I could not lie or the lie would come back at me from all four directions and trap me. Then he said I had to go with him to the white man's school. And when I told him about my grandfather being dead, he said he would ask one of the missionaries to go back with the horse and tell my mother where I was. But I did not want to go to that school. So, I was taken into captivity, just like the white soldiers had taken our people away from their homes in the olden days. Some of us did not even get to say goodbye to our families. Sixty-eight pounds. Name? Parshinia. I would not tell them my name, for then they would have power over me. The one who talked in both tongues was part Ute, and the Utes have always been our enemies. He won't answer. He's got to have a name. We'll give him one. How about Richard Begay? They tried to give me a white man's name, but I did not take it. I am son of the hunter. <laughs> gotten a late start, the advanced students will help you catch up. I know it seems new and strange to you now, but I'm new too. After a while, we'll get used to each other and we'll get used to the school routine. Now let's pick up where we left off yesterday with the English lesson. On the pony, away we go. Run and jump. Pretty good. Grandfather. That's better. Happy birthday. I could not understand anything. These others were traitors to their race, learning the tongue of the white man. Wilson, I think I've got something here that'll just about fit you. Let's try. That's not bad. Now let's get a hat.
Uh, I think that's too small. Here's a good one. Oh, that's fine. Now go on. Richard. Come on, Richard. Kind of like that, don't you? Now we'll see if we can get a coat to go with that. Richard! Richard, come on! I'll never play this white man's games. Not if they kill me. escape from here. An older boy ran away yesterday after breakfast, but they caught him and he got punished. I will have to be smarter than him. When I run away, it will be for good. I'm worried about that new boy from Bitter Springs Canyon. I can't get to him no matter what I try. You know, in all the time he's been here, he hasn't learned a word of English. He hasn't played with the other boys. He hasn't even made a friend. Yeah, I noticed him. We're pretty overcrowded here. Do you think we're wasting our time with him? Give him more time. I was like that when I was first brought here. Hated all white men because I was afraid. He's just afraid. You're a real lone wolf, aren't you? Well, I don't blame you. A lot of strange people around, strange language. I know just how you feel. I wish I could speak Navajo, just for a moment, even. You kind of like that helmet, don't you? I think I've got some gum here for you. See that knife? My father gave it to me when I was just about your age. Here's a can opener. That's the regular blade. Here's a screwdriver. And a punch. Would you like it? Go ahead. Take it. Friend.
Was he there at the bed check last night? Yes, he was there at nine. All right, thank you. He's been planning this for a long time. Will you go with me, Billy? Where? We know he must be headed for home. That's somewhere near Bitter Springs. Maybe the father's over at the Franciscan Mission will know where he lives. Yes, I know that family. They were the only ones living up in that canyon. A couple of weeks ago, a little girl came in to tell us that her mother and sister were sick. I got there too late. After I buried them, the Hogan was burned, according to the Navajo custom. It happened so often like that out here. There's so many little orphans all over the reservation. The little girl is with the sisters at St. Michael's until we can find her relatives. We think the boy will go home, Father. Can you tell us how to find it? Yes. You won't be able to drive all the way, but you follow this road till you come to the place where the bridge is washed out. while I was away. All my mother's cooking things had been broken, and the whole gun had been burned to ashes. They only do that when someone has died inside. Nothing was left. There were no sheep, no horse, not even the dog. There was nothing, nothing but evil thoughts. the voice of the wind again. It was getting louder, like the night I was up on the rim of St. Guy with my grandfather. And it warned me about the rattlesnake. didn't see us. That's right, but he felt us. He's a Navajo. Where would he go? I've got him on my conscience. Somebody will adopt him. Navajos love children. Did you send out a description of him? Yeah, every trader in Navajo policeman will be looking for him. We'll find him. But he looks like a thousand other little Indian boys. Not him. Remember, he's got that helmet on. He'd get rid of that. I don't think so. He even slept in it. I'll bet he's wearing it right now, wherever he is. at the place called Rock Standing Up, and it made me sad. I remembered my grandfather and how he had talked to the stars. Maybe the stars were wrong, or maybe he could not see them well anymore. He was old, and his eyes were not so good. And I thought of my mother and little sisters. Something had happened to all of them. Their lips, too, were sealed. Then I remembered that nothing really dies. 
And I knew that Gracinger was young again, somewhere in the other land. And that someday we would all be together again. The next morning I came to the post where Gracinger had traded the pino and nuts for all the good things for our family. My grandfather had always spoken well of the white man called his losing his pants, and I was very hungry. I was hoping there would not be anyone in there, but it was crowded. Then a strange white man without any hair asked me what I wanted. I told him I wanted some food. He made jokes with me and asked what I had to trade. I hoped that he did not want it, for it is a good knife. He told me to keep it and asked me what I would like to eat. Then he's losing his pants, recognized me. Aren't you Gray Singer's grandson? I did not tell them that Gray Singer's lips were sealed. I was afraid if they knew, they would not give me any credit. He's dressed just like that kid they're looking for. He told me to wait there while he got me something to eat. But I knew it was a trick. As soon as his back was turned... Better phone that school. I think that's the kid they're looking for. through here sometime yesterday. How can you be so sure it was Richard? No one around here has that kind of soul. That's the shoe they issue at the school. Should we leave the car and follow him? He set it for the canyon. We can drive over to the rim. There's lots of fresh wagon tracks up here. We must have had a fire dance last night. Do you think Richard might have been here? Maybe. He wouldn't like to spend the night out alone. Wow. And I get dizzy just painting the roof. Say, look down there. I can't see that far. You don't think that could be Richard, do you? He's got something on his head, but it doesn't look like a hat. Looks like that helmet. But why would he go clear down in the canyon? Navajos have always gone down there in time of trouble. But how do you get down there? And there's a trail over there. That's a long way down. Want to let him get away? No, I don't. Lucky we brought that water bag. cold when I came to the ruins of the ancient ones, for the spirits of the dead were in there.
kid must hate us a lot to come way down here. Once he ran away, he couldn't go back. We're like that. Pride? Sort of. Another big canyon turned off. This must be the one they call the Canyon of Death. I knew our people went into here to hide from the white soldiers, so I followed it. Headed into Canyon del Muerto. There were colored paintings of antelopes on the side of the cliffs, and other strange figures made long ago by the old ones who lived here. of the early Spaniards that first came in here. One with a cloak as a priest. behind me now. If 
if I kept running ahead, they'd catch me sure. I made tracks as though I were going into the canyon of death. Canyon. If they saw me, there was no escape. I felt like I was running into a trap. High up, there were ledges and caves where I could hide. If I could get up there, no one would find me. backtrack to throw us off. Pretty smart, huh? Yeah. He's been in here all right. He's not going to get out of here. sees the fire, he'll come over to us. He's up in there somewhere, but I'm not going to try to find him tonight. I know he was just homesick. Tell him I promise him he won't be punished if he'll just come back. What's the matter? Don't you think it'd do any good? No, I don't think it would. Well, then, go back to sleep. I'll watch.
I was cold and hungry and thirsty. But I thought of our people who had hidden in caves like this long ago. They chewed bark and rubbed mud on their bodies to keep warm. And they lived like this for three years. One night was nothing. I knew that coyote of a youth would try to come up after me. So I made a trap for him. What is it? Well, I heard something. I think he's up there in those old ruins. He couldn't get up there. Well, they used to. The old Navajo sit up there from Kit Carson. You'd better watch out. You'll break your neck. Well, if somebody doesn't go after him, he'll stay up there. I guess we haven't got much choice.
I was free again, free to go wherever I pleased, free to get some sheep and live like my people have always lived. That you couldn't have been hurt bad. Anyway, it was his own fault. If he hadn't gone up there after me, he'd be all right. And that white man won't leave him to save himself. They are fools, the white men. It is black down there, black like my thoughts. Black like the night that old Gray Singer knew he was going to die. I tried to forget about my enemies back there. It was turning colder and night was coming on. Now they would know what it is like to be cold and hungry. The wind began to whisper. I had never heard it so clear. It sounded like the voice of my grandfather. But it sounded like music, too telling me to put aside the evil thoughts that were leading me into the darkness. But they are my enemies. Let them die. They are my friends, and I must go for help and save them. In one good thought, the voice was saying, there is good for all the people. In everything, there is beauty. The earth is beautiful. Mm -hmm. 